So when we think beyond the internet, beyond biology, so when I saw Meg, I think, was wearing an up bracelet or one of those. Um, I, yet, oh, you've got one too, bad, okay, yeah. so little plug there, but that's another example. Um, what are some of the other pockets of data that we're going to be able to harvest you know, very shortly? I think, that, I think the, the next big, so we, we, we saw the internet, we saw Wall Street, we saw, we saw science. Um, I think the next two big generators of big data are going to be the personal health, which you described, and that if you were anywhere at CES this year, um, you know, the kind of the quantified self stuff, the fact that, you know, we now have the Moore's Law of sensors and we can measure this stuff and it's super easy. That was one of the big trends. Quickly, can you raise your hand if you use a Fitbit, Nike Plus, Up, any of these? Okay, that's uh, half, a third, half, half. okay. Good. Pretty also cool. includes things like uh, my uh, Withings scale, the scale that you stand yeah. on, et cetera. So, yeah, um, uh, yeah the Zio uh, sleep band at night. I mean, I'm a little bit of a quantified self nut, <laughs> um, but... Um, uh, I made my husband get rid of the sleep band. Just going to put that out there. Yeah. Not a good idea, but... At any rate, um, <laughs> so there's, there's, the, there's, there's, there's the quantified self. There's the kind of you know, personal health and, and things. And actually, much more interesting area for me. I mean, I think that's terrifically interesting for personal, but for, for industry, I think what's, uh, what GE calls the industrial internet mm. is actually um, much more interesting. What we have here, so just kind of walk into the underlying technology. What's going on inside our phones right now we think of it as big phones, mobility, et cetera, but there's actually a technological revolution going on here. Moore's law has never worked faster than it's working right now in MEM sensors, ARM processors, GPS cameras, wireless modules, et cetera. I mean, if you actually track the sort of price performance improvements of what's going on driven by the Apples and the Googles of the world, it's never moved faster. We, we're seeing the impact on the devices in our pocket, but these components have application everywhere else. So I, my, I, I, a month ago, I quit my job as editor of Wired to run a robotics company. And the reason I was able to do that is that these sensors are allowing a kind of a personal computer-like revolution to happen in robotics as well. GE's observation with the industrial internet is that basically all machines will be covered with sensors. These, these, these sensors cost pennies. Mm -hmm. And that as a result, so right now, a, a jet turbine that they do for, for an airline, I mean, it used to be, you know at, at, you know, at the end of a flight, you used to sort of download a few K of data. Now the thing generates like, like a petabyte an hour. Um, and so we are just, all the machines around us, the trains, the cars, et cetera, they all generate this vast amount of data. Um, we don't know how to use that right now. So GE, for example, is doing competitions to do things like sort of say, here's flight data. Mm -hmm. um, let's just toss it out there like the Netflix prize and say, um, can somebody get a 10% improvement in flight and fuel efficiency? Or a, or a routing pattern for into, into, into airports that would take you know, five minutes off, off the average flight or increase mm -hmm. on time arrival, things like that. And so, um, I, so what you're seeing is this quantified self movement on our bodies is turning to a quantified machine um, movement out there in industry. All of those are generating uh, you know, more data than we've ever seen before and demand for the analytical tools to do something with it. Mm -hmm. And how, another thing I hear a lot from companies is we talked about this a bit earlier, the analytical tools aren't really catching up fast enough. And so, um, actually, this another question. I mean, we've seen a lot of promises of big data, but do you still think it's uh, overhyped relative to sort of what we can do from it today and the actionable intelligence, so to speak? I, I, th I certainly think that our ability to collect big data is way ahead of our ability to make sense of it. Um, I wish I could tell you that you, you know, that you should exactly who you should hire out there. I mean, you know, I can say Bayesian statistics, but you know, easy to say, hard to do. Um, you know, and, and also every company is different, every industry is different, and you know, turning this into actionable um, advice is, is hard. I do know that the sort of the SQL era of being, you know, doing queries around structured data, that that era is largely over. That by and large, you got to think like Google. So, I mean, Google is the this is going to be a little, a little promotional for Google, but Google is the sort of the gold standard of big data analysis. And from the very beginning of PageRank, you know, which is the initial paper that defined their, their, their search algorithm, they recognized, um, Larry Page and Sergey Brin recognized that you know, fundamentally we were looking at noisy data, we were looking at probability rather than certainty. We were dealing with, we were dealing with messiness and we were letting big numbers compensate for a lack of precision or understanding. And so like, you know, in this, you know, in, in that article you mentioned initially, I, I was initially, I was inspired by this by understanding Google's machine language translation. Mm -hmm. 
So the old method of language translation is you needed to understand the structure of language and verbs and nouns and you know, sentence, sentence structure. And then on the basis of this, you would sort of say, well, you know, this is what this word must mean, and here's how it fits together, and how's how you change it to the other language. And Google said, I don't, we don't need any of that. What we need is just two corp a corpus of one language and a corpus of another. Two of these, these two corpi, I guess, is the plural. Um, and we're just going to look at we'll look at correlation. And if this if this word seems in, in in French seems to correlate with this word in the same usage in Spanish, then we're going to call that a link. And over time, the statistics will build up. And initially, it was bad, but then it got much much better than anything else that went on. And they applied that same sort of noisy technique, where big numbers compensate for poor understanding of the structure. And they've applied that to everything from autonomous cars to to, to search to advertising to to language to 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 health. Um, when you look at the people they hired. It is economists, it is obviously computer scientists, it's applied and pure mathematicians, it's statisticians, et cetera. Those are not your traditional database experts. And so you know, we've gone from the SQL movement to the NoSQL movement, and things like Hadoop and other of the tools that, that came out of, out of Google are driving this. So I think it's kind of the golden age of the statistician, mm -hmm. um, in, in a sense. And you know, whether they're trained as a statistician or whether they're computer scientists who learn statistics, that's who we need to hire. Mm -hmm.